Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are y'all doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well for even more links to different playlists, all kinds of stuff. This video is all about pre-compiled headers and I'm going to be telling you why you should be using them, when to use them and also how to use them, plus a lot more details. So. Also, I'm using Visual Studio 2019 community version. It's free. It's a great way to follow along with my tutorials and also a great IDE to use in general. Uh, and I know how to do it in here, so I'm just gonna show you how to do it here. You can do pre-compiled headers on pretty much any IDE as well as on Linux. So, But we'll keep it to Visual Studio just to keep it simple. So go ahead and try it out. At least you'll know the basics about it. So what I'm gonna do, there's a few ways to do it. You can create a new project in Visual Studio. And if you don't have any pre-compiled headers, for example, if I use the wizard, Windows Desktop Wizard, I'm gonna get an option to create an empty project. Now, most probably if you went to school, you will have learned that you can create an empty project. Don't click in any boxes, just make a really simple Hello World application. Otherwise, if you just use the console app for example, if you search for C++ here, you're gonna find a bunch of things, empty project, console application. Most of these come with the pre-compiled header or at least give you the option to set it by default. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Windows Desktop Wizard and we're gonna create a completely, completely empty project. And I'm gonna show you how to do this by default. And then I'm also gonna talk about why to use it. So first of all, create your project. I'm gonna just create it on my desktop here. And here you got a bunch of options. I want you to select console application. I want you to click an empty project. Don't click in the pre-compiled header here or anything else. Just do an empty project, click OK. And you'll just get a straight up, completely empty project here. First things first, let's create a new item in the source files folder here. And we're gonna make a main file. So CPP, just call it main here, very simple. And let's do our usual include IO stream int main return zero. And let's print out a std c out hello world. And let's do a new line. Now, most of you might be confused already here. Let me just tell you really quickly. This is how I do my new lines because end lines usually are a little bit slower. Also, I do not use using namespace STD, but that's a whole different video. So check that out why I don't use it, but it just complicates things to be very, very simple. Uh, anyway, do it like this and you have a very simple application which you can run and you should be able to see hello world here and you should be able to see your build build times and everything in this little debug window down here. So as soon as this is run and built, if you go up here or if you go down, you'll see everything is built, everything is fine. This is the debug. If I go to build, you'll see that everything was built fine here. So I wanna show you a cool trick. Uh, if you wanna see the time and everything built for building your projects, go ahead, go to tools, go to options. And I really recommend you to do this. Um, and, and check out the other options available, but that's a whole different video. So, but go to projects and solutions. You can search here as well. You can search for build and run and you'll see MS build project build output verbosity, 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 sure, sure. There you go. So that's what, what it will probably be on minimal. You want to put it on normal probably, or even detailed diagnostic just to check the differences out, but you can do that. That's perfect. And then if I rebuild this, if I clean this, and you'll see a lot more details here, and I build this again, you'll see that we got some time elapsed. So pretty much half a second here, or in a, pretty much a second, I'd say. Uh, and that's very quick, right? That's really, really quick. So that's a good way to see what's going on and a good way to debug your applications and just to have fun with it. But let's keep going. So you have your main here, you have your hello world. Now what a pre-compiled header does is when you include a bunch of libraries like this, it might look very simple to you, but what you're doing is you're including a header file that's already written, right? So when you create your classes, you create header files, you create CPP files, just like that, you have these libraries. This is part of the STL, the standard template library. And of course, there are a lot of different types of libraries you can include, but mostly you're probably gonna use STL libraries, but they're huge, they're so big. The header files are great, huge 
files and then you have the cpp files which have all the definitions of all of this so there's so many things there's so many things so most of these files are huge and the cpp files are huge and you're probably going to include a lot of these so for example if i'm going to go ahead and include vector here as well i'm going to include include maybe you're going to use list here maybe you're going to use include f stream for some file input output so we're going to include a bunch of things here you're probably going to use include sorry let's just do a control d right here for a few of these let's include a stream for string stream right let's include string even all right let's keep you can keep going for so long and so long but these files are huge and they are probably included in a lot of your files so this is a very small project but usually you have a large project with lots of classes if you have a game for example we do game dev up, up in here right so if you have a game if you check out any of my series where I do a game, you see I have lots of files, I have lots of headers, everything, and I'm just including stuff everywhere where I need it. Probably gonna need string everywhere, probably vector as well, I stream most probably for debugging, uh, file stream, all kinds of stuff. So it's included in several places, right? And these files, of course, when you include it like this, and in your header files, you probably have pragma once and all that, uh, and it's not going to read that that file twice. Most of these also have that probably. But what happens still is you're going to be compiling your huge project. And each of these files, which have changes, are going to recompile. And they're going to read all of these files over and over and over again. Even if you're not making any changes in these files, you might make a new Hello World here. Control S. You want to rebuild your project. It's going to go ahead and include and read all of these again before it compiles the entire project for you with this small little change it doesn't even have to be anything big it can be a new line just like that any change in the file you recompile it it's going to reread everything that is in that file and recompile the whole thing that's how that works now you're going to have to read about how the linker works and how all that works i'll make a video on that as well but for now let's keep it simple just know that it's going to recompile even if you make the smallest change and it's going to take all of this with it to recompile this one file and imagine having 20 files where you make some small changes and everywhere you have all these includes your compile times are going to go crazy right they're going to be huge you're going to have compile times of over like several several seconds i've had compile times of 10 20 seconds like huge 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 timings and it's totally unnecessary because you you don't you're not making any changes to these files in themselves you're just making small changes in your own files and what the pre-compiled header allows you to do is have one big file where you include all of these things that you probably need and all of your all of your files you can go ahead and go crazy you can include just about everything you need from the stl libraries and all that stuff i'll i'll give you a few tips on what not to do but first of all let's just keep it simple you can include a lot of stl things that you know are not going to change into this all right hundreds of them whatever the thing is, when you do it, it's going to create a little package when you build your project for the first time after using the pre-compiled header. So it's going to create a very nice, very easy to read package for the compiler in binary and a big package that it can just, you know, use everywhere it requires. Everywhere you have included these files, it will just go in there, grab whatever you need, put it in in the right place and so on. So it doesn't have to recompile the entire this package each time you run your program. Because you're not making changes to it. Obviously, if you make any changes to this pre-compiled header uh, package, for example, add a new include file, it's going to recompile it once, but that's fine. It takes one long time, but then the next compile after that, and the, the, the other ones after it will be really quick because it doesn't have to re-include all of these things over and over again. So basically, just think of it as a little package. You take all of these includes you put them in one place and that's included all across your project and you don't have to think about any of this stuff again you just include that one one pch pre-compiled header file and everything is good to go now of course you're going to have your own files and stuff but we'll get to that but first before you get bored let's go ahead and create a pre-compiled header from scratch so the two things you're going to need you're going to need a new item here you're going to need a header file, of course, and I'm going to call it PCH. You can call it whatever you want. Some people call it STDFX because that was a default thing in Visual Studio before. So if you ever see that file, STDAFX, 
that's a pre-compiled header file which is added by default to your visual studio so it's good to know sometimes it does that as well when you create a new project so anytime you see it just go ahead and think of it as a pre-compiled header well it is a pre-compiled header anyway let's create this pch.h now let's create a new item again let's do a cpp file here now pch and the thing is what you're going to find funny is this file the pch.cpp only needs to include to the pch.h and nothing else empty because this is used to create that object file that binary package that you're going to use later on so the cpp file is required but you're not supposed to do anything in it what you want to do is you want to include a bunch of things in here so i'm just going to grab everything from my here you can remove pragma once as well i'm going to include everything from my cpp file and i'm just going to include the pch.h in here and now we have our pre-compiled header included the only thing is we haven't set up our project for this so this is just going to act like a regular old header file so but to, to make this a pre-compiled header we need to tell the project to treat this as such so the next step is to go into your project properties go to c plus plus and you'll see a tab here for pre-processor no sorry pre-compiled headers very similar to these two so you get confused anyway pre-compiled headers i'm going to do this for all configurations here all platforms whatever and then go ahead and here you'll see okay it's not using pre-compiled headers hmm let's use pre-compiled header in the project okay and let's change the name of this to pch.h instead and there you go you don't have to mind anything else okay apply it the only last thing you have to do is go to pch.cpp right click it press properties and instead of use go to the same place here pre-compiled headers instead of use do create on the cpp file and apply it because this is going to be treated as creating the pre-compiled header using the header file here and then the source the project is going to use this header file package in all our projects here so now it should be set up let's run this and it's very quick right boom you compile it boom 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 very nice let's go to our build now let's say it took 89.89 seconds whatever there we go okay so pretty much 89 milliseconds let's run it again and you'll see that let's see let's change something sorry about that let's change something first here let's remove a new line and all that and let's run this go to build and you'll see it took a lot less time 26 here milliseconds pretty sure this is milliseconds anyway 26 milliseconds but the thing is why was it so much less why is it so much less if i add a new line here and run it it's still going to be way less than what it was the first time which was 89 let's go to build again you'll see it's 15 now why is that well because it built the pre-compiled header once and now it's using that it doesn't have to redo all this in the main file were i to include all of these things in here or if i do it the other way i go to properties and i say i don't want to use pre-compiled headers here not using pre-compiled headers apply and then i want to rebuild this boom go to build you're going to see it took one second and 17 milliseconds and every time i do a change here it's going to be the same it's going to be huge you see imagine this is only one file and it's taking one second imagine how long it's going to take one second of 14 milliseconds imagine how long it's going to take for something that has like 20 30 files using all of these includes and this is not even a lot of includes here so i'm going to put this to use again apply let's do a clean build let's rebuild this there you go it took 81 right and then let's do a little change save build that boom okay go to build again and you'll see it will decrease as we go let's do it again there run that okay there just had to build it once again there you go there you go now it's a lot less say 15 so boom easy peasy lemon squeezy there you go guys and girls that was pre-compiled headers pretty much and why to use them now of course you can include your own files in here your classes your header files but i need you to know one thing of course if you change this anything in here if i include something new in here 
now I just changed my thing here. Sorry about that. Include. If I include something else in here, let's do deck. Whatever. I include something else. You know it's going to rebuild that whole thing and then it takes a lot less or a lot longer. See? Now the thing is, if you include something that changes frequently in here, for example, if you have a game, you put your player class in here, you put your map class in here, anything that you make changes to regularly, it's going to have to recompile the whole pre-compiled header each time it notices any change in any file in here. So this is a good rule of thumb to not include things that change regularly. If you have some kind of uh, some kind of very basic class that just you created once like a like a, a Container class that you know works and you don't need to make any changes to it frequently put it in here all good all good to go You don't you don't have to worry about that But if you want quick compile times use pre-compiled headers and use files put files in here that don't change frequently Hopefully that helped guys. Hopefully you'll be able to make huge projects now without any issues Just one thing I want you to know is to always include the pch.h into the cpp files Don't put it into header files put it into cpp files You can't put it into header files, but it works just as well put it into cpp files Just try that out play around with it and you'll see that it works just fine uh, And here you go. There you go guys intro to really quick compilation times Thank you for all the support. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching my videos. Also, drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the links, all the links for all kinds of cool content. I got a bunch of stuff on my channel, guys. Go ahead and just drop likes on anything you do like, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.